Hello friends, my name is Adam and this is a mighty smart company. Another review on the device of our company. Our engineers came up with such an interesting trick. Let's see what is interesting here. How these devices differ from the previous devices on which we reviewed. And why do we need all this? Let's go! So, if you have already noticed, here I have such a device on which we have already reviewed earlier. This is the MT61SR. I talked about it in detail in another video. It is an automatic crew switch, with protection against overvoltage, undervoltage, differential current and so on. This line is called MTM5EL, and it is analogous to MTS61SR. There is all the functionality that we talked about in MTS61SR, but there is one significant difference. This is the bandwidth of this device. If our MT61SR has a rated break and current range from 32 amperes to 100 amperes, then this device already starts from 120 amperes to 800 amperes. So, what is interesting about this device? Let's go in order and start with the functionality. This device includes a huge range of various functionalities. It is not only protection of power grids, it is also control and monitoring. This device is set to control via RS-485 and dry contacts. At the bottom, we have special terminals for connecting this interface. Also, this device has a reconnection after short-term malfunction. What I mean when I talk about short-term malfunctions? For example, high voltage. These are some kind of temporary overloads in the network that occur for a very short time, literally for a minute or a few seconds. And with the help of this device, it will be possible to carry out the continuous power supply. That is, we turn off the power supply in case of short-term malfunctions, for example, an increase in voltage after which this device determines the state of the power grids. If after some time the voltage is restored, the device automatically turns on and supplies power to the network. But if you do not need this function, you consider it unsafe or it does not fit your facility or your equipment, then you can turn it off without any problems. How can I do that? I'll tell you about this a little bit later. So watch this video to the end. So we continue what we have, therefore the functional. We also have monitoring of the parameters of the power grid. We can monitor such parameters as voltage, rated current. We can track things like temperature, frequency and many more many things. Now I will show you a complete list on the screen about what this device can specifically monitor. All this can be checked on LCD display. Well, what else is interesting about this protection? Let's see what protective functions this device performs. Here everything is quite ambiguous. If the traditional so-called MCCB, that is the circuit breakers in the case, perform the function of protection against overload, against short circuit, then here this protection functionality is supplemented. And it is supplemented specifically with protection against overvoltage, undervoltage, protection against phase loss from imbalance, including short circuit and overload. There is also protection against residual current. That is, this device also includes the functions of a protection shutdown device, or as we often call UZO. That's all we have to do with the protection of power grids. Let's talk about the management that I talked about earlier. Control is carried out through a dry contract RS-485. As I said earlier, we have terminals. There is software and we connect to our device. Then we can carry out the connection and turn off this device remotely. So, this was the basic functionality of the device. If I talked a little about protection, a lot about management, and in general what this device consists of, what features it has and its advantages, let's talk a little not just about the cons, but about what this device does not have. Unlike our other devices, there is no wireless connection here. That is, you can't connect a communication module here. That would provide us with a wireless connection via 4G and Wi-Fi, or some other wireless networks. But nevertheless, the device synchronizes all its data not with the software, but it is stored in the device itself or in the RS-485 software. But it should be understood that the RS-485 is a wired connection. In general, I described all the stripped-down functionality that was not installed in this device. But nevertheless, there are some peculiarities here that I will tell you about now. As I told earlier, there is a differential current protection. Protection here is in a different range, starting from 50 mA and ending with 800 mA. If we look at the front of the device, then we'll see the designation in which range a particular device can be configured. As we can see, there is 125 ampere device, and we can reduce this threshold to 50 amperes. It is the same with the differential current. 
here we can choose the sensitivity that we need. We can choose 50, 100, 150. This is configured directly on the device itself via the LCD display. The next feature is the electronic on and off on this device. As we can see on the front part, we have two buttons that are signed as open and closed. With the help of these buttons, we can turn off and turn on this device. But there is also a mechanical way to turn it on. We have a hole for a hexagon and there is a special key that we insert into this device. Turn it after which the device will be turned off or on. This is a precautionary measure that will help you turn off the device in critical situations. One of my favorite functionalities in this device, and in general in all my smart devices, is this adjustment of the parameters of the electrical network. What does it mean? The device performs the function of protection against overvoltage, overload and differential current. That's how I said earlier, with the differential current we can set the settings for connecting or disconnecting in a certain range. If we have devices of 50 mA, then we need 100 mA, then we can change the shutdown threshold. Also, with other parameters, we can set up a voltage cutoff and automatic restart at a certain voltage. If the device turns off at 500 volts and turns on in 350, 400 volts, and it is back on our network. Practically no one provides such ample opportunities in the field of electrical protection equipment. That a huge number of different parameters can be configured in such a wide range. Here we have everything in one. You just put the devices, set them up for your power grid, set up for your equipment, for your facility, and after that it works. And you don't need to deal with a lot of different devices. And you also don't need to purchase a different number of protective devices, various electrical equipment. You just take one device, install and forget about all the problems in the electrical network. Well, the next feature of this device is this data recording. I said that the data is not synchronized with the cloud and with the software without connecting the communication module, but nevertheless, they are all stored in this equipment. The device has an internal memory that can record all the data about the shutdown, the reclosing, the state of the electrical network, at what time and under what circumstances the device was turned off. Thus, by looking on the information on the LCD display, you can already analyze one or another object for the reason for the shutdown and the appearance malfunctions. This is also quite convenient, because you do not need to make your own diagnostics and check what could have caused the shutdown. The device gives you all this information. Agree, it is pretty convenient. And of course, the most important feature of this device is the display itself and the control panel that gives us access to all devices. The software that it installed in this device is intuitive. And if you need to change the language of the software, we can provide it. You just need to contact us, after which we can, with the help of our specialists, carry out the translation, if your project needs it. Now let's take a close look at what we have on the LCD display, what functionality can be configured and what can be viewed. Now I have connected the device and we will check how this device functions with the user. So, let's first see what they displayed on the display itself. On the display itself, we display data in real time. These are the parameters of the power grid, and we see that we have voltage of 225 volts. We also see that the device is closed. And let's try to disconnect it mechanically now. Fine, the device has shut down. Let's now try to turn it on mechanically. We see we have a reconnection, if we pay attention to the inscription. Great, we see that the device has turned on for us, so let's go to the settings. Press setup and see that we have one display these are settings. We go over and see that we have settings here for various parameters of the electrical network. We can configure, for example, short circuit protection, and we can set different values, after which the device will be disconnected in a certain way. So let's see what else we can adjust. We can adjust the overvoltage. That is, we can show at what voltage it should turn off and turn on again. We create some settings. And after that we saved. Now we go back. This is how you can view what we have. We can also configure other data from this device. We can also recover the password for access. So that you have the opportunity to ensure against partition intervention. So we hear there is a lever by the name of the auto and manual, which means manual and automatic switching on. We transfer the devices to manual control, and thus we can turn on the device with our key. 
with the LCD display and the software that it installed in this device we figured out. And now let's figure out the technical characteristics of this device. As we can see, this whole line of the devices is 3-phase, 4-pole. We also have different types of rated break and current, ranging from 125 amperes to 800 amperes. Here we have devices for 400 amperes. But if you need, we can send you 800 amperes and 630 amperes and 250 and 125 amperes. It already depends on your need. You can lower this threshold. Say if you purchased a 400M device, but you need 320 and so on, you lower this threshold using the setting in this device. We have an operating voltage of 400 volts and a rated differential break and current of 50 amperes and 800 milliamperes. In general, this is all that could be told about this device today. If you are interested, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends. In the following videos, we will show you in practice how these devices work under load, under the influence of any malfunctions, how they interact with the consumer and how we connect this whole thing. There will be a lot of interesting things, so be sure to subscribe so as not to miss our next videos. Adam, Marty Smart and these MTM5EL giants were with you. Bye!